I'm Mason, and this is Kara. Hello. And we are the host of Expert Secrets Revealed, Conversations in Health and Fitness, also known as the ESR Show, sponsored by Centrax Nutrition. It's a show built around exceptional people and ideas that educate, entertain, and inspire. Mm -hmm. And we're really excited about today's guest, Nancy Addison. She is a radio show host, a podcast host, mm -hmm. and a number one best-selling author of seven books related to health and nutrition. We're super happy to have her on here. A couple of her books would be uh, How to Be a Healthy Vegetarian, mm -hmm. Raising Healthy Children, Lose Weight, Get Healthy, and Never Have to Be on a Diet Again. Excited That's to hear nice. about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's a sought-after keynote speaker and member of the National Speakers Association. And she's very well known for cutting through the myths and misinformation as it relates to health and nutrition. So, yeah. Nancy, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure. I'm so happy to be here connecting with y'all. Thanks, Nancy. So I'll just start with this. Now, I know that you help people each and every day live their healthiest lives. Tell us a little bit about the myths associated with nutrition and basically healthy eating habits. Yes, and there are so many of them. I think one of them is that calories are so important. And I think calories is really an antiquated uh, philosophy. And it's it, I think it's more important to address the quality of your food and not just the caloric uh, amount. And I think in many ways, many foods that are in the same categories, caloric wise, the healthier ones might actually have more calories than the ones that have that are less good for you and of the, of the same type of variety of, of food. And so I think it's more important to address the quality of your food all the time, uh, mm -hmm. much more over than looking at the caloric intake. And then I think also uh, protein over the years has been really emphasized. And, you know, I think all of us who grew up in, you know, any time in the last 50 years, we've just been bombarded with make sure you have enough protein, make sure you have enough protein. But what we really need, and I've, I've learned this through the years, is that we need complex amino acids, which are the building blocks for protein. Mm -hmm. So protein is very different from animals than it is from plant-based foods. And uh, most of my clients are actually people who eat, are not vegetarian and just want to be healthier. But they have the idea that every time they're hungry, they need to eat some protein. And what I've found is that as I've talked to people through the years who were vegetarian, they said, well, I tried to be a vegetarian and I just had to go back to eating meat because I felt like I was hungry all the time. And what I think is those people are not getting enough healthy fat in their diet. And I think they're really craving healthy fat and people have a, a an idea that having fat in your diet actually makes you fat. Whereas if you have healthy types of fat in your food, it will make your food more savory, but it also supports your brain health and gives you more energy. So having these healthy fats in our diet, I think is absolutely critical for our health. And I think a lot of people who go on plant-based diets don't get enough of the healthy fats in their diet and they don't get enough complex amino acids. And the healthiest forms so that they are satisfied so that they don't have cravings and they don't feel hungry and then with people who do eat creature foods really looking at the quality but if you look at t colin campbell's study with the china study and also at the cleveland clinic with uh, dr esselstein of the who was head of the Cleveland Heart Clinic, he says really what we need are the complex amino acids. And this China study found that when your body overall diet gets over 10% of creature protein, tumors form. And so you want to just be aware of your overall diet and make sure there's balance. And if you do eat creature foods, you know, make sure that you're eating quality ones, but limit it to less than 10% of your overall diet. And so, uh, you know, just, just a few, a few things that come to top of mind when I think about misinformation out there. What would you, what would, yeah. could you give some examples when you, when you say 
um, higher quality foods. Could you give some comparisons and contrasts what you consider higher quality foods and lower quality foods? Right. And that's a really great question. And quality food, in my opinion, is, and I, I believe in our divine creator, uh, I believe the divine creator made life perfectly and it has everything we need in it. But over the years, we've contaminated things with toxic herbicides, with genetically modified seeds. We put poisons in the water. There's poison in the air. So how do you get a quality food? Well, you try to find one that is as organically grown as possible and that's not genetically modified. And then you want to look at processes of that food. You know, has it had nitrates added to it? Has it had MSG added to it? Has it, you know, been tampered with by man is the way I look at that. And so a quality food would be one that man has not tampered with as much as some of the others. You want foods that don't have chemicals in it, that have not been microwaved or radiated and or pasteurized, really. Pasteurization actually kills all the probiotics in a food. And so if you're buying a food that is supposed to be probiotic rich and it's been radiated or pasteurized, it has killed all the probiotics in it. So it's, you know, fancy advertising, but it's a waste of money. And so uh, one of the things I, I try to teach people is how to maneuver through this crazy advertising jungle and mm -hmm. pick the foods that are quality, that will feed your body on a deep cellular level, which is what becomes your cells, your tissue and your blood. And so it directly affects your health and your overall well-being. Correct. So there's so much with that. <laughs> when you talk about that, I'm going, oh, I have so many questions. But one question that comes to mind is because obviously we all try to eat healthy every single day. We eat out a lot. We are a world of convenience, right? We live on mm -hmm. convenience, uh, drive throughs everything else. Well, you know, you have to at some point. Um, what are your suggestions with that? How do we know even, let's just say, let me narrow it down a little bit and just say eating out. How do you narrow down um, what you order to make it the healthiest possible on these menus? Right. Well, I have to admit, I do ask the waitress questions and sometimes they'll have the answer and sometimes they won't. Or I may ask when I'm you know, coming in, ask the hostess, or if I know I'm going somewhere, I may look it up online and actually call them. But I want to find out if they add MSG to their food. And we tend to think it's only an Asian food, but that is not true. There is no limit to how much MSG they can put in your food. And it is a chemical that can cause brain damage. And what it does is it's addictive and it, it hits a part of your brain that makes it think that the food is good, but it actually can cause brain damage in, in the way it hits your, your brain. Uh, with these chemicals. And so you want to ask, do they have MSG in the food? And just, you know, they don't take you seriously or they don't know what you're talking about. I always tell people to ask the, the waitress or just, you know, privately away from your table, say, you know, I'm deathly allergic to MSG. Can you, can you find out and make sure that whatever it is I ordered doesn't have that in it, is free of that chemical? And they'll take you more seriously if you tell them that you're deathly allergic to something because they don't want you falling over in their restaurant. That's a good idea. And I've even had people who've traveled to Asia write it down in those languages so that they could hand it to the waitress if they don't speak that language and, and say, I'm deathly allergic to this. Can you please make sure my food doesn't have it in it? And then you can also ask if the food's been microwaved. Say, I don't want any food that's been microwaved. And I also ask the, the restaurants, do you have anything organic? And more times than not, I am happily surprised to find out that, oh, yeah, these salads are organic. Or, yes, we make this soup from scratch every day from organic ingredients. And it's really quite amazing how many restaurants do now cater to more individualized types of, of diets. And then also 
when you go to a restaurant like that, if you're really watching your weight and you are trying to be really careful, sometimes I'll take my own salad dressing with me. Mm -hmm. Or if, if you're wondering how much sugar is in that salad dressing at that particular restaurant, say you just want olive oil and vinegar and they'll just bring you the balsamic vinegar and oil to your table and you can put your own dressing on yourself. And I also carry my own salt with me because salt is one of the most important things we have in our diet every day, but most people don't realize there's a big difference between white salt and mineral rich salt. And they think just because it's salt, it's all the same and it is not true. I carry my Bolivian rose salt with me. Uh, a lot of people use Himalayan. There's also a brand up in Utah called Redmond's or Real Salt. But you want to mine salt that is full of minerals because your body cannot function without these minerals. And most people are, are these mineral deficient. And so I carry my salt with me and I use that instead of any of the salt that they may have on the table. So <laughs> that's a really great suggestion because I know, so at work, all of us are always self-conscious about getting too much sodium in. And we just talked about this the other day. I mean, that's such a big deal. And what the difference is, you know, in, in the salt and how to read it on a label. And that's the other thing I was going to ask you about that label. I consider myself a label reader, but I don't with the advertising and everything else. What can we believe? What can we not, you know? Yeah, it's that's so a really tough one. And, and they're making it harder and harder for us. But I do take my reading glasses with me every time I go to the store. <laughs> I still read the ingredients, but there are FDA approved ingredients or not approved ingredients. Uh, if it's below a certain percentage, they don't have to put it on the label. And I think that is should be changed and should never have been made available to manufacturers, but I think they should have to state what's on the, on the foods. What I've found is I try to trust some of the companies or food companies that are more family owned mm -hmm. and not huge corporations. I think some of the bigger corporations tend to tamper with their foods more and uh, I don't trust them quite as much, some of them. And so I, I try to look for companies that are still family owned and managed because I feel like they're more quality oriented. But I think really just looking for, for really good quality food that's not in a package for the most part is a great way to go. And then just try to visit farmers markets when you can. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's, there's a point in time where you have to trust something or it will just make you crazy. So you it'll make you crazy. To, it'll just it makes make me you crazy. crazy. <laughs> so I put in the back of, of my bigger books, uh, in the back, I've got resources and some of the companies that I like and I frequent and, uh, I experiment on myself. So I never refer anybody to do anything that I'm not doing myself or haven't found to be viable and, and a, a good fit for for health and well-being <laughs> right now do you have any tips on boosting your immune system especially nowadays with COVID and everything else people are really looking to boost their immune system I and mean, just you know getting healthier um with with everything that they eat and drink and uh, you know just staying safe what are your tips on that right and those are those are really that's a really important question and I, I do know a lot of people would benefit from getting out in the sunshine without sunscreen on. Uh, you've got to get that vitamin D. Most people are low in vitamin D and the people who've gotten ill and gone into the hospital, the studies show that they're dehydrated, they're low in vitamin D, they are low in vitamin C, they're, they're low in zinc. Uh, if you have a zinc deficiency, you actually have a uh, lack of taste and lack of smell. And so a zinc, most people are zinc deficient and things like iron and copper will prevent zinc absorption. And so having zinc with something like quercetin, which is a, a really great antioxidant, it's a flavonoid that you can get as a supplement. But if you take that with the zinc, then that actually opens up the cells and helps the zinc get in because we tend to 
uh, block zinc uh, with our body. Uh, a lot of times people are eating zinc rich foods like pumpkin seeds or lentils or, or different types of grains or seeds, but they're not sprouted and they've got enzyme inhibitors in them and they prevent you from absorbing the nutrition. So in my books, I talk about different ways you can prepare these so that they actually remove the enzyme inhibitors and the phytic acid that prevents you from absorbing the nutrition from those foods. And so much of it is eating quality foods, but you also want to prepare it properly and you want to chew your food. Most people are not chewing their food. And I think this is one of the biggest health problems there is. We need to chew our food until it's almost liquid because you're, you're going to absorb the nutrition a whole lot better if you have chewed your food. And when you're having a drink with your meal, you tend to just wash it down. And if you're sitting with people and talking, I know a lot of people just don't chew their food. And I think, you know, sit back and really enjoy your food, but, you know, relax and really digest it and absorb it. But getting sunshine, eating really high quality food, getting that nutrition in your body. I think eating a fresh piece of whole fruit every day is very important. You get that vitamin C and the vitamin C is probably the best, best um, thing you can do for your health overall is every day eat a fresh piece of vitamin rich vitamin C food. And uh, Dr. Thomas Levy, who's one of the world's leading cardiologists, and he's also written a book on vitamin C. He thinks it is uh, probably the best thing you can do for your health, uh, bar none. And he recommends liposomal vitamin C if you're doing a supplement. But uh, also he does say that eating a fresh piece of fruit every day in its whole real form is a really good way to get the vitamin C into your body. And I think a lot of people just aren't eating fresh food in their whole real form. And I think that is just a really important thing to do. And then hydrating. The studies show that the hydration is so low in people. And I think the root cause of disease is intercellular chronic dehydration. And part of that is the salt I was talking about a while ago, the mineral rich salt. Those minerals are the electrolytes. So the word electrolyte is a fancy medical term for the word salt. <laughs> wow. And we have to have those in order to absorb the water. And if you're drinking water that has no minerals in it, then your body's going to pull it from your body in order to process that water. And uh, I think these fancy waters, these electrolyte rich waters, I think a lot of those are, are just too expensive. And I don't know if they're actually really good for you. They look like they have chemicals in them some of the ones I look at. So what I do is I purify my water and get the chlorine and fluoride and the glyphosate and all the other toxins out of it. And then I add my own salt to it and stir it really fast in a circular motion, which creates a vortex. And that will actually structure the water and structured water. And this is a study done by Dr. Pollock at the University of Washington. He found that that's the fourth stage of water. It's like a gel-like structure. It's more close to uh, the water that you would get in a watermelon or a cantaloupe. And it's really four to 10 times more absorbable, more hydrating than normal water. So having the proper type of water, having it structured, having it mineral rich, you are going to absorb that water much more. And you would like to preferably drink that an hour and a half, two hours after a meal or an hour before a meal so that you're not destroying the nutritional value of your food. And so I think sunshine, quality food, really relaxing and, and taking yourself out of the fight or flight mode when you're eating, and then hydrating in between, in between meals. Uh, another great hydration liquid is coconut water. So yes. if, if you don't have access to a, a good quality water, coconut water can usually be found around the world for, for people to, to have. And it's full of electrolytes and it's incredibly good for you. And uh, they actually used it in World War II for uh, doing blood transfusions when they couldn't find blood because it works so well with our blood physiology. And so I think it, it's something that, to keep in mind if, if anybody is needing a blood transfusion, I know they're having troubles today getting enough blood because 
the people who have gotten these injections uh, are not allowed to donate anymore. And so I think, you know, maybe we can look at coconut water as a viable option there. Nice. I've got a question for you. You were speaking about some of your books and one of the ones that jumped out to me, because I don't know who wouldn't want to read this one, but lose weight, get healthy and never have to be on a diet again. What would you say are some of the most important? <laughs> there you go, that one. So what would you, you caught say, our eye with that one. What would you say are some of the most important guiding principles that you mentioned in that book? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, I think that is so important. And I think with this last year, people have been eating a lot of comfort food and have put on a little bit of weight. And it's really easy to reverse that. And part of that is some of the things I really just mentioned sitting down when you eat, you know, trying to relax and put yourself in a a relaxed state and chewing your food consciously and really dissolving that food before you swallow it. I think that is truly one of my biggest tips for people. And it takes your brain about 15 minutes to know your stomach's full. So if you're gulping down your food and you're just wolfing it down and you're not well, you could eat a whole lot more than you really, really actually need. And, you know, one of the things I enjoy about a meal is actually the taste and savoring it and really enjoying the chewing part. And I think if people could get back to that and stop eating on the run, stop eating standing up, you know, stop, you know, eating in your car, you know, if you possibly can. And, you know, like if we're eating in front of the refrigerator, <laughs> pull up a chair. Okay. Okay. So, so, one, so one of your guiding principles would be take the, take the time, get seated, and, and, and don't rush through your meals. What other type of principles do you have behind that, that uh, you right. consider pretty much guiding and very important in that book? So important. And I think eating real whole food in its fresh form is so important because it's got the live enzymes in it, and it, that will help heal the body. The, the food has an energy to it. And there's been many scientists throughout the last 20, 30 years, 40 years, Dr. Pop, uh, uh, who has studied, studied the enzymes of food. He's found that food that is fresh and organic and living has a frequency. And when it absorbs into your body, the, the DNA, if it's organic, healthy food, your DNA will tell your stem cells to actually heal your body. Whereas if it's processed or toxic or has poisons or, or any kind of chemicals in it, it's a totally different frequency. And he says these fractured frequencies, when they go into your DNA, they actually tell your body to make cancer cells. So I think, you know, this is where the quality comes in. And uh, Dr. Tony Jimenez also has done many studies with cancer. He has a cancer, holistic cancer clinic. And he was studying, you know, does honey actually feed cancer? And so he was researching that to see if if that's true, because everybody says, oh, sugar feeds cancer. Well, he found that that wasn't true. Honey is a natural product a natural food product in its whole real form and if you have honey it actually does not feed cancer what his study found is that these molecules have electrons that either spin to the left or they spin to the right and foods that is organic fresh in its whole real form the electrons spin to the left including honey and it does not feed disease it does not cause disease Whereas foods that are processed, genetically modified, radiated, microwaved, and any kind of chemicals in it, those electrons spin to the right. And he found that those do cause disease, do feed cancer. And so his research goes very much along with Dr. Pops. And it's, it's all about quality and finding food that doesn't have chemicals and additives in it that cause disease. You know, it's and interesting so, you say that because one of the things that you actually, that's kind of the second time you hit on something that I want with, with, without sounding like a shameless plug, you know, one of our, our, our sponsors, uh, Centrax Nutrition, you know, that's one of the things that they take very seriously, like with the, the whey protein supplements and whatnot being native whey and uh, grass fed and RBST free, mm-hmm. you know, so that the, the protein that they're extracting isn't from cows that have been given right hormones and things like that so you know i I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about the importance of Mm -hmm. you know natural and 
chemical free and I mean, uh, that's important. It's and very important. You, you do a much better job descri <laughs> describing the importance of it than I, than I do, but I appreciate you taking the time to yeah. explain to people why that, that's important. Yeah. I mean, we could talk to you all day. We're, we're running low on time, so I wanted to just make sure that you got to say what you wanted to say. We want you to say it. Tell people how to get a hold of you, because I know I'm going to be reaching out to you too after this, because I have so many questions. So how can people get a hold of you? You are so sweet, and it's been my pleasure to join y'all today and an honor. And uh, my website is Organic Healthy Life, okay. L-I-F-E, which is, I think, what we all want, don't you think? Yes. OrganicHealthyLife.com is my website, and you can get hold of me there or sign up for my free newsletter that comes out a few times a month with, I think, helpful tips. And uh, you kind of keep up with what I'm doing. And you can also find my links to my radio show there or to my books as well. Your books are on Amazon, I'm assuming, also? They are. They're on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. They're, uh, almost all of them are in audio as well. Uh, and ebook, and some of them are in large print. Wonderful. Yeah, that's so easy when it's on audio. So you can listen to it on your way into work. I like, the large, I like the large print. I'm old school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she benefits both of us. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. And we hope to talk to you again really soon. And thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the ESR Show. You can find this podcast and many others on ESRshow.com. We'd also like to thank our sponsor, Centrax Nutrition. You can find all their products at Centrax.com. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you next time.